soñado que había un hombre. Está metido en algo. ¡Daniel! ¡Mamá! Vi un puente enorme en medio del bosque. Lo demolieron hace años. ¿A dónde vas? Sinceramente, no lo sé. Um, well, originally, I, when I first got the offer to do the show, I said no. I just didn't really know that I wanted to play another antagonist right now, villain, in a kind of supernatural story. I was a little resistant to it. And then they were like, well, just read it. You know, there's, there, the, all the scripts were written before he started shooting. So that was right off the bat something that attracted me to it. It's unusual and really exciting when all the scripts are written before you start shooting. Uh, it's rare. And, uh, and so I, I read six scripts and I thought, well, wait a minute, this is kind of cool and different and interesting. And, and then I had a conversation with Jamie O'Brien, who's the showrunner and the creator, and she was great. I really liked her and her energy and her collaborative spirit. And then I talked to Kari Skogland, who was directing the first two episodes. And I just felt like also the opportunity to transform myself into this character, disappear into this physicality. And, Um, they're just all the things that were appealing about the project started to stack up and all the things that I was kind of concerned about started to fall away and and uh, and then I read the book the book's so good I just felt like yeah I want to want to do this well Charlie Manx is a uh, 135 years old uh, he's a kind of a Vampire of sorts. Historia de vampiros diferente. He doesn't drink blood. He he absorbs the souls of children and takes their their energy. It's a complicated story because he's got a kind of savior complex. He thinks he's helping these kids who are being abused or neglected by their parents. He comes and takes them to this place. It's a figment of his imagination, but that exists in the world called Christmas Land. Yeah, I mean, and, and he's, a, he's a smart, manipulative, scary guy, but he also is a victim himself, you know? He was terribly abused and neglected as a child, and so it, it warped itself in him. And he believes that he's doing something good for these kids. He's a really dynamic character, and kind of funny. You know, he, he, he's a man out of time, like he lives in a different era and yet he exists in the modern world. Um, so it, he's just complex, I don't know, I mean, he's, he's interesting, colorful. Yeah, yeah, Peter Pan never grows up, right? Charlie Manx tries to never, not, but Charlie Manx is also someone who's constantly looking outside of himself. It's, it's part of why, as he gets older, he gets so sort of crippled and like twisted because there's an emptiness in him that he was never able to fill himself. And he didn't have anybody in his life when he was young to help him, to love him. And so he's this very empty, hollow husk of a person. It's not straightforward, it's not one thing, it's complex, which I like about it and I hope audiences will too. Yeah, I mean, when I came onto the show, one of the first things I said to Jamie and Kari uh, was we need the best of the best to design this makeup. And we got the best of the best. Joel Harlow is an Academy Award winning special effects makeup artist who I've had the pleasure of working with before and who's really truly like the top of his field. He's amazing. And so he came in and started to work with us. We decided to make five phases of the look And then what I was able to do was go separately and work on a kind of physicality and vocal variety, you know, choices that would inform the different phases of the character. And then we brought those two things together. So the makeup really informed the physicality and the physicality really informed the makeup. It was very important to me that the choices I was making as an actor, uh, even in the most extreme looks of prosthetics, Uh, translated for the audience, that, that the audience could, could see what I was doing and connect with it, which Joel made possible. Uh, and it was a great collaboration. I loved working with him, Richie Alonso, who's his 
his um, colleague and Cheryl Daniels who does the wigs. I mean the team around me were just top-notch people and we spent a lot of time together so it says a lot that we never got tired of each other. <laughs> There are similarities and there are differences, you know. Um, I, I think every experience that we have as human beings is informed by the experiences that we've had previously. So I don't necessarily know that I would have been the first choice for this role had I not played Siler or Threadson, you know. I mean, it's like those things feed one another. And especially in our business, people, people love to visit what they know. Uh, and that was part of the reason why I said yes in the end. I haven't done TV in five years. And I thought, if I'm gonna come back, it might be fun to come back and do something that I know audiences like to see me do, uh, as a kind of springboard into experiences that I wanna do. And as I'm doing press for the show, it's sort of crystallizing for me in a way. It's like, this is the third like powerful archetypal villain that I've played in my career. I feel like that's good. Soy la única que puede detenerle. Voy a dejar Christmas la han hecho cenizas. No puede andar lejos. Hay que castigar a las malas personas. Hay una lista de buenos y una de malos. Y ella está en la de los malos.